Hello, friend. This is Pastor Emmanuel Musisi. Praise the Lord. I've been going through the book of John, who is the apostle, one of the 12 apostles. It's been very wonderful because as I've been going through it, I see confidence, I see assurance as a believer. And today I just want to share as we go slowly with you in chapter, chap, chapter 6 of John. This was when there was a miracle of of bread when God delivered to them that is Jesus Christ when he gave them the, the bread to eat and it was very wonderful at this crusade because after three days after preaching people were hungry and so he gave them some food and this is uh, what happened after feeding the 5,000 men and many women and many children but after the miracle they came following him and this is what happens John chapter 6 and verse 29, the Bible says Jesus answered them uh, because they had a question. There was a question on verse 28 which says, what must we do to do the works of God? That is John chapter 6 and verse 28. Then Jesus answered them, that is verse 29, and said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Now, we have the greatest work we have to do as people of the world. That is believe in Jesus Christ. Because for them, they were asking for the works. Maybe out of the law, out of the traditions, out of the culture, what must we do? Should we, uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. That you are going to preach the gospel, you pray seven times a week, stuff like that. That's what they wanted to know. But he said, this is the work. And this is what I want to commit to you, for you to understand. The greatest work ever is to believe God. If you believe Jesus Christ to be your personal savior, that is the greatest work. Because when you believe, it's like you have surrendered your life to him and the rest is left unto him. He has the power. He's going to, uh, to, to move with you through everything. First of all, you assure your spiritual life with him. You receive eternal life. When Jesus was teaching, he says, in John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his own begotten son, that whosoever believes him should not perish, should not die, should not get lost. The moment you believe Jesus Christ, you cannot get lost. You are not going to die. You are not going to perish. But you are going to receive eternal life. For you who has already believed Jesus Christ to be your personal savior, what are you now? You have eternal life. You have life which does not die. You have life which has, does not stop. You are immortal. You are spiritually alive. And so these people were not believers. They were asking, what can we do to do the works of God? They said, this is the work of God. And as we go down here, this is just about assurance. On verse 37, it says, uh, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. This is another level of confidence. Wherever you are, I'm speaking to you that has already believed Christ as your personal Savior. The story behind you is that God thought about you, the Father thought about you, and after thinking about you, He committed you to His Son, Jesus Christ. So this is what Jesus is saying. He says, Oh, the Father gives me all that the father gives me will come to me if you have been predestined if you have been ordained to come to christ you are going to find your way to christ and this is what the father is doing is he gives the people that he loves the people he has chosen the people that he has selected he gives them to his son jesus christ and he says all that the father gives to me will come to me now you who has already come to, to, to christ was ready to come to God, was already God saved. It was a thought of, of the Father. It was the thought of God, and He thought about you, and He knew you, and He brought you to His Son Jesus Christ to do, to do what? To, to die for your sins, to wash you clean. And He says, Whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. This is now what happened. When the Father selects you out, He gives you to Christ, and Christ is the Good Shepherd. And he says, when I receive people from my father, I will by no means 
That's what some other versions say. By no means, I'll, I'll by no means cast away the pastor that comes to me. That is a great confidence. If you are in Christ right now, there is no provision of you being cast away. What does it mean? Whether you are big or small, whether you are coming from Uganda or you are coming from the USA, you are coming from China, the moment you drop into the hands of Christ, for him, his work is to contain you. However bad you are, however vile you could be, however disturbance, whatever, whatever disturbance you can ever bring around, the power that is invested in Christ is able to contain you. So that's why he says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. I've got the power. I've got the methods to cool you down. I've got the power to save your soul. Nothing can ever defeat Christ. You know, at times when we are preaching the gospel, at times we belittle, at times we underrate the power of salvation and the power of Christ and say that person is too much for God. That person is too much for the church. That person is too much for Jesus. Yes, it could be too much for you as a pastor or as an evangelist or as a father or as a brother. But to Christ, nobody is too much. No sin is above the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone that comes to him, Jesus says, I'll never cast out. 38 says, So I have come down from heaven. Why are we defeated at times when we are leading the people? I'm, I'm a pastor. I've been in the pastoral area for many, for many years. But at times you say, This person is hard for me. I have a friend of mine who said, When, when somebody is too hard for them, they just he refers them to other churches. You, you may find somebody who, who is so hard here, who has. You have failed on him. You have tried everything. You have prayed for them. You have counseled them, but they, they, you, you fail on them. And next time you find them in another church and they're doing pretty well. Some, some other people are coming from other, like in, in Busia Miracle Center, we help people come from other places. And, and people declare them as failures, as unclean. But when they come here, we try on our, on our levels. And some of them have, have become very good ministers. So even Christ is speaking like that. He says, for I've come down from heaven. He has the materials which the world cannot have. He has the technology which is beyond the, the world. You know, if a, one mechanic, if one doctor fails because of the machines, like for me, uh, I'm, I'm on the eastern side of Uganda and we have hospitals here, but some of the machines are not here. The scanners, the, 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 some of those medical machines are not available in this village of ours. So when we fail, we refer to Mlago Hospital, which is a bigger hospital than us. So at times, because of the materials we are having as pastors, the teaching materials, the, the colleges who went through the experiences, the money, the, the, you know, the, 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 the board of, you know, the, the, the board of ministers that, that is surrounding us, the counselors, at times we don't have enough of them to contain a person, but to Christ, because for him, he came from heaven. The Bible says, I come, I come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. 39 says, and this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. Wow, that is great. He can never lose even the weakest person. He can never lose. In fact, one of the qualities of a good shepherd when Jesus was teaching about shepherdhood, he said a good shepherd leaves the 99 and goes for the one that has got lost. And when he gets the, the, the lost, when he comes and celebrates, that is the nature of Christ. He says, of those that God has given me, of those that my father has given me, the Bible says here, he has a commission, he has a... a an assignment that it should lose none of the people. Now, if you are in the hand of Christ, that is the assurance. Our shepherd is very powerful that if somebody comes into the hand of Christ, there is no provision whatsoever to get lost. Wow, that is great. As long That is the confidence that you will have. The Bible says, he that began a good work in us is faithful. You are in safe hands. 
if you have believed Jesus Christ to be your personal savior, you are in the right hands. Don't expect any loss. Don't expect to slip away. The Bible says to him that is able to keep you even from falling, and is able even to present you before his father in glory. That is the confidence that we have as believers. You know, one time when I was still in the religious circles, we were fearful. Every time you say, am I going to manage? I'm so weak. I'm going to go to hell. And, you know, everything was defeating me. I was condemning myself. When I, when I commit a, a certain offense, when I have some small sin in me, big or small, whatever it could be, I was already condemning myself. I said, I'm not going to make it to heaven. But the Bible here says, them that are in the hands of Christ, it does not lose anything. The Bible says, but at the end of the day, it's going to raise them up on the last few days. Some people are so scared about the last few days. They said the last few days have come. The last few days are coming. They are coming. In fact, some of them even misquote the, the scriptures. They say that Jesus is going to come back like a thief. No, it is the last few days that is going to come like a thief. But it says, but to you, but you are not going to be overtaken as if you are not in the light. You are children of the light. The day is going to come like a thief to the people who are not believers, but to them that have already accepted Jesus Christ, they are already children of light, it's going to come when they are watching and they are going to get excited because their Lord is going to come for them. Wow. Now, as I'm concluding here, it says again here, uh, Jesus answered to them and said, Do not grumble among yourself. That is 43. 44 says, No one comes. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Now that is the confidence again that we're building again. Because even our coming, we did not come by ourselves. Somebody called us. Somebody knew us. There is a Uganda saying that says uh, that you are you, you come by yourself. When you see people uh, peeling ripe bananas, you come because you, you want to come and have some of the sweet bananas. Nobody calls you there. There are some functions in Africa when you, are, when you see people eating, you just, you just come and join them. But we don't just come without being called. God has called us. And you know, when we come to church or when we come to Christ, it is because of the big call that is coming from the mouth of God. No one can ever come to God. No one can ever come to God is by the power of God. You are not there by your own power. You don't come because your pastor preached a very, very sweet message. You are there because God called you. As the pastor was preaching, as the evangelist was preaching, there was a call that was behind those words. And when you heard those, voice, that, that, those words, it, it triggered your spirit man and you responded to that call and you were born again. And so whatever is happening in your life today, it is by the great God. And I conclude by this and say, 65 says, this is why I told you. Jesus is teaching them and say, and say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted, it is granted him by the Father. So it is a grant. It is a privilege. Coming to the Lord is a great privilege. As believers, nobody should ever deceive you. When G, you know, when I was reading the book of John, John is one of the, the closest apostles. In fact, when Jesus was having 12 apostles, he had some other three, that is John, Peter, and James. But from even the three, he had John who was so close to him. So he's speaking the real heart of God. That's, in fact, when you read the book of John, you, have, you find very many scriptures that are so touching. For God so loved the world, that is John chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, he told those who uh, he came to his own and those who believed him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. He's speaking profoundly to the people that we are to believe the gospel. He says a thief comes, but, but uh, a thief does not come but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and life in its fullness. He says, come unto me, you will labor. Whatever. John is speaking great thing. Why? Because he knew the heart of God. He knew the love of Christ. Now, even you, as we share, continue being established in the Lord. Nobody should deceive you that God does not love you. 
God loves us. In fact, even if the whole world was not around us here and you were only one in the world, God would love you. You are irreplaceable. You are the only one of your type, of your kind. God cannot afford to lose you. That's why he sent Jesus Christ and he died for you. The Bible says he purchased for you a place. You are the purchased possession of God. He has put a seal of the Holy Spirit around you that nobody can even touch you. He has even put a garant of the Spirit. That is the reborn. That is the deposit that when when, when he has already paid off something for you, it's just waiting to come and take you home. Nobody should ever deceive you that you are going to get lost when you are in the hands of God. John chapter 10 and verse 20, he said, For those God has given me, nobody can even snatch them out of my hand. That is the confidence. That is where we are. So even in this season where you are, as you pray, concentrate. Begin to think about the great love of God. Don't waver. Don't condemn yourself. The Bible says there is now, there are for no condemnation. For those who are in Christ, your sins were paid for. You are as white as snow right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are a child of God. Hallelujah. That is so great. And for you who is listening to me, I've never accepted Jesus Christ to be your personal savior. You know, when you receive him, all your sins are washed away. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so has he taken away our sin. And when you believe Jesus Christ, all your sins are going to be taken away. And your name is going to be written in the book of life. And there shall be no judgment over you. But you shall just fly and go away to heaven when the day comes. And that is so great and very important. If you want to accept Jesus Christ to be your personal savior, just repeat after me and say, Jesus, I receive you to be my personal Lord and Savior. He's going to wash all your sins away. And you just join church, which is so close to a Pentecostal church, the people that believe in the Holy Spirit, the people that know that Jesus is the Lord of their life. I'm one way to see. I love you very much. This is from Busia Miracle Center Church. God bless you. Bye-bye.